I'm on the Viking Sea for a 10-day Caribbean cruise, and I want to bring you up to speed on Viking because a cruise on Viking Ocean Cruises really is different than a cruise on the other major cruise lines. The most important thing to know is that these ships are completely uncrowded. This isn't anything like cruising on a mega cruise ship with 5,000 other passengers. The capacity of each of the ships in the Viking fleet is only 930 passengers. When you're cruising with that small of a number of passengers, the ship feels completely uncrowded. You never have any trouble getting a lounger by the pool ever, not even at the most desirable times on the sunniest, warmest days. And there are a huge number of little places all throughout the ship where you can sit and relax, enjoy the view out the windows, read a book, or do whatever you want without ever feeling like there are a bunch of other people around. And Viking is adults only. There are no children aboard, no one under 18 years old. So when you're relaxing out at the pool, you won't be disturbed by screams and squeals. You will never ever hear someone shout, Marco, <laughs> and someone else shout, Polo, back at them. I can see how for some people, Vikings adults only policy could be a problem, but for me as a 61 year old guy, I love it. It changes the whole tone of life on the ship. The other big difference is that there's no nickel and diming on Viking. They're not constantly trying to get extra money out of you. Things that typically would cost extra on the other major cruise lines are included with your cruise fare on Viking Ocean Cruises. For example, internet access. That can easily cost you $100 or more on the other cruise lines. But as a Viking passenger, unlimited internet access is all part of the deal on as many devices as you want to bring with you. On most cruise ships, even after you pay for internet access, you have to log out of the internet on your laptop before you can use the internet on your phone. Or if your spouse wants to access the internet, you have to log out. There's none of that on Viking. Just feel free to use the internet on all your devices anytime you want. Another great example is the self-service laundry facilities. Some cruise lines don't even bother to put self-service laundry on their ships. They want you to pay them to do your laundry for you. On the cruise lines that do have self-service laundry facilities, you have to pay to use the machines, just like at a laundromat at home. But on Viking, the machines are here for you to use at no extra charge, and even the soap is provided. They're just not out to nickel and dime you. In your cabin on the television, there are movies on demand. A lot of cruise lines don't offer that at all, and the others that do, it's like $5 per movie or maybe more. On Viking, no extra charge for those movies. Just enjoy the show. You are a guest on board and you have already paid to be here. Their business plan does not depend on getting more money from you once you're aboard. Another great example is how the other cruise lines, when they quote a price for a cruise, they always say that port taxes and fees are extra because they want to make their cruise prices seem lower than they really are. At land resorts, they play the same game by quoting you one price and then later adding a resort fee onto it. There is none of that nonsense on Viking. Port taxes and fees are included as part of your cruise fare on Viking. Viking ships all have a really great spa with a thermal suite, very similar to what I've seen on Norwegian Cruise Line, but on Norwegian, you either have to buy a spa pass or stay in a more expensive spa cabin to have access to the thermal suite. On Viking, every passenger has full access at no extra charge. And if you decide to have some kind of a spa treatment, like a massage or a facial, on most cruise lines you're going to get a hard sell sales pitch where they try to get you to buy some kind of product to take home with you. The pressure that they put on you to buy stuff can ruin what should be a relaxing massage. There is none of that kind of pressure on Viking. 
on most cruise lines if you want a coca-cola or a beer or a glass of wine or even just a bottle of water that would cost you extra and it's not going to be cheap but on Viking Ocean Cruises, bottled water is free anytime, as are specialty coffees and teas, and beer, wine, and soft drinks are all included with your lunch and dinner. If you want to buy a mixed drink or a shot or anything like that, the cost to do that on Viking is about half of what it would be on most of the other big cruise lines. If you want to buy the unlimited beverage package so that you can have unlimited alcoholic beverages all day and night, all cruise long, the cost to do that on Viking is literally one third the cost of doing that on Carnival. And while most cruise lines want you to buy their expensive drinks and will confiscate bottles of liquor if you try to bring them aboard, on Viking, you are welcome to bring your own if that's what you want to do. And Viking Ocean Cruises doesn't charge you extra for dining at any of their restaurants, any of them. Even if you dine at their Italian specialty restaurant or their chef's table, or even if you order room service, it's all included in your cruise fare. Even the stuff that they put in the refrigerator in your cabin, the candy bars, the soft drinks, it's for you, their guest, at no extra charge. And depending on what category of cabin you stay in, there may even be alcoholic beverages in your refrigerator, which are all included and which will be replenished daily. You are treated with respect, not suspicion, on Viking. On most cruise lines, if you want a towel out by the pool, you have to present your room key card so that they can keep track. And you better be sure you bring that towel back, because if you don't, they will charge you for that towel. On Viking, towels are everywhere out by the pool. Take as many as you need. Take a couple ashore with you if you're going to the beach. And hey, if it looks like rain, they'll even give you an umbrella to take with you. They treat you like you are their guest, and that is exactly how I want to be treated. Another way you can see how Viking is not trying to nickel and dime you is in the things that Viking doesn't have on their ships. They don't have bingo. They don't have a casino. They don't have art auctions. They don't have photographers constantly trying to take your photo so that they can sell you that photo at an outrageous price later. So that's a whole lot of examples that I hope have driven home the point that on Viking Ocean Cruises, they are not out to nickel and dime you, which is a real breath of fresh air compared to the other major cruise lines, which are constantly trying to nickel and dime you. The other thing that you need to understand about Viking that's very different than some of the other cruise lines is that this is destination focused cruising. With some of the other cruise lines, it's all about the ship, not the destination. But a Viking Ocean cruise is focused on the experience at your destination. There are lectures on board about the places you'll visit, and on our 10-day Caribbean cruise, there were no sea days at all, not one. We had two days to explore San Juan, Puerto Rico, and after that, we visited a new port every day. So, on our 10-day cruise, we visited nine different ports. On the other cruise lines, you're generally looking at a seven-day cruise, and typically you'd only visit four or five ports. And here is a huge difference. In every port, Viking offers a shore excursion at no additional charge. So, for example, in San Juan, there's a tour guide that'll take you over to San Juan's biggest tourist attraction, the historic fort at the harbor entrance. This is the place where, back in 1595, they managed to successfully prevent an armada of ships led by Sir Francis Drake from invading the city. Now, if you like learning about the history of the places that you visit, you will love a Viking Ocean cruise where every port you visit will have a shore excursion led by a knowledgeable local guide at no additional charge. I should also mention that every cabin on every Viking Ocean ship has a balcony. There are no inside cabins and no ocean view cabins. Every cabin is a balcony cabin. 
and they've made some really great design choices in the cabins. There are electrical outlets on both sides of the bed and USB charging ports too on both sides of the bed as well as at the desk. The desk was very thoughtfully designed to include a big makeup mirror and a makeup storage area. The door out to the balcony is a sliding door so it doesn't slam shut and more importantly all of your neighbor's balcony doors will not be constantly slamming. You'd be surprised at how long it took some of the other cruise lines to figure that out. The one negative thing I will say is that in the two lowest cabin categories, Viking didn't really design in quite enough storage space. Maybe they can fix that in their next generation of ships. If you get a penthouse veranda stateroom instead of either of the two lower categories, there is plenty of storage there. Now, the bathroom, even in the least expensive cabins on the ship, are brilliantly designed with heated floors, anti-fogging mirrors, and I just love the shower in the bathroom. This is so much better than the tiny little showers you get with a standard cabin on most other cruise lines. There's even a little shelf for the ladies to prop up a leg for shaving, and there's no need to pack soap, shampoo, or conditioner. That is all included. Another thing I love about Viking is that there are no formal nights. They do ask that when you eat dinner at one of their restaurants other than the buffet, or when you go to a show in their main lounge, you dress a little nicer than casual. In other words, no shorts and no blue jeans. But there's certainly no reason to bring a tuxedo or even a coat and tie if you don't want to on a Viking Ocean cruise. There will be lots of people that are dressed up nicely, especially in the restaurants. But if your idea of a great vacation doesn't involve packing a bunch of fancy clothes and totally dressing to the nines, that is totally okay too on a Viking Ocean cruise. Another important difference about Viking is the crew. Viking pays their crew members more than the other cruise lines do, so Viking is able to attract and retain the very best people to work on their ships. It is a noticeable difference from what I've seen on other cruise lines. The crew members I talked to were happy, they liked working for Viking, and it showed in everything that they did. The crew treated me exactly the way that I want to be treated. I also really like the decor on Viking. I've been on a few cruise ships where the decor is just over the top awful, but the Scandinavian design influences on Viking are impressive, and it's just a really beautiful ship that I feel very much at home on. So you can definitely consider me a fan of Viking Ocean Cruises. This is my second Viking cruise, and I think it's a pretty safe bet to say that there will be more Viking cruises in my future. For me, it's right up there with the Haven on Norwegian Cruise Line, only it comes in at a lower cost per night than staying in the Haven. I'm Jim Zim. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in booking a Viking Ocean cruise, I'd recommend you use a travel agent, one that has a good understanding of all the differences between the various cabin types and the differences in the perks that come along with each of those cabin types on Viking. I can definitely recommend my travel agent, Caitlin Gallagher of Ambrin Travel. You are welcome to get in touch with her and have her take care of all the details involved in booking a Viking Ocean cruise for you.